What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to CHGO Bulls pregame, coming to you live from our studios here in West Loop, downtown Chicago. I am Peck, Bulls underscore Peck, sitting in for our guy Joey on the controls. It's our pound producer, Kevin Wells. What's, what's up, Kev? What's good, boys? Looking sharp in that blue polo. Hey, appreciate you. Thank yeah, you, man. You look like you're ready for spring. That's a very spring color. I can't wait. Broke out the golf shirts today, went through the closet, I saw. switched the wardrobes. I'm ready to roll, man. Ready to roll. And sitting in for our guy, Big Dave, it is our friend, from the Bulls Gold Podcast, the one and only Salim Suderwala. Follow him on Twitter at Salim underscore BG Hoops. What's up, buddy? What's going on? Thanks for Rocking having me. Rocking the Sub-Zero T. Yeah, like yeah, a true CS show I, diehard. I had to uh, represent for uh, for the show. I love this shirt. This is It's really cool. Like, it's just an awesome shirt. And it, I, I, I must say, like, I really like, like, I, I've, I've purchased a few CHGO shirts. Mm-hmm. I love the material. I love the fit. Like, they're, not, they're soft, right? When you wash them, they don't, like, yeah, they don't fade. Up and yeah. fade. Like, they're really good. I Only mean, the I best like for them. our fellow CSGO diehard. I'm not just, Chicago sports fan. I'm not just trying to, like, both smoke <laughs> up anyone's ass right now. I legitimately like the shirts. They're really good quality. So, yeah, uh, definitely worth it. Like, if you, if you buy one, it's going to last for a while. There you go. Uh, including, did you get any of the new ones from the Chicago collection we dropped uh, on our second anniversary at the beginning of March? The ones I, that have like the CTA oh yeah, designs. The the, well, I got the the green one because oh, I the love St. Patty's. Yeah, yeah, the St. Patty's. I, I love. Oh any, yeah, I saw you posted a picture of you of you wearing yours. Yeah, St. Patty's yeah. Weekend. I love any green like. So like, I, I love to find like uh, I have like a green socks hat. Yeah. And then, like, I've been trying to find a really nice, like, t- this type of green bulls hat, but, mm-hmm. like, I can't find it anywhere. We were talking recently, uh, me and Big Dave, about why they uh, discontinued the whole, you know, wear the green bulls jerseys on St. Patty's weekend yeah, thing. Because the bulls had a home game, I think it was that Saturday the 16th, and, you know, they had green Benny out there. Yeah. But but not they don't do the green jerseys anymore. Yeah, I don't know. That, I don't know what happened with that. I, don't, I wonder if, like... They have too many obligations for like sponsors and all maybe different jerseys. So maybe like just it, it makes the the old school, you know, from the the two thousands era when they were doing that, makes those like sort of like vintage collect collectors items now. Yeah, uh, assuming sure. that they won't ever make any new ones. Have to have to go on like an eBay and yeah, you know, right. Like old like buy one second hand. <laughs> ben Gordon Green. Uh, Green jersey, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I see people in the comments already talking about wanting to see some Javante Green minutes tonight, uh, which we were just discussing. Uh, still here on that 10-day. Maybe we will see some five Javantes out there, hopefully because the Bulls have this one in hand by the time we get to the fourth quarter. Hopefully. Hopefully, right? Hopefully. I mean, they should. I'm, and ideally, like, like last time, they had the Wizards up by, like, 30, uh, as you guys like to call them, Wizards. The Wizards, yes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They had him up, and Billy had the stars up in late. So I sure did. I'm hoping he just, you know, throws at home, throw Javante in, man. Give the crowd right. uh, what they want, man. Like, so uh, that was one of the games that Kobe missed in his brief uh, absence from the hip injury. And um, we saw Io Caruso put up a then career high 34 points. In that blowout win over the Wizards, um, and then you know he set another career high with 35 points two games later. But we now have Kobe back in the starting lineup as of their game on Saturday, and uh, I wanted to kind of touch on this because people in our comments on Saturday's post game, Salim, I think were a, a little bit impatient with Kobe's first two games back. I don't know what you've seen. I've seen a guy who's just maybe still working through a bit of soreness with that hip strain, and was out for a while and was a little bit rusty. You know, he he only scored 13 points in the game against Houston and then 11 in the game against Boston and combined to shoot just 33% from the field in those two games. But I'm saying I'm going to give Kobe some time, give him the benefit of the doubt, and hopefully we could see him find his shooting touch again tonight. Yeah, I, I think as LeBrust is definitely there because his shot's not falling the way it normally does. And even when he's driving the basket, like he, I feel like his touch is off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he had a really good floor game last game, like 10 assists and only like two or three turnovers. Yeah. Um, a part of me also wonders, like, if he's if he's trying to be a good teammate and letting Io continuously try to see if he can get going. Right. Io um, took 16 shots yeah, in their game yeah. on Saturday. So... I, I think it is like all a combination of that, and I, I don't think Kobe's trying. I think Kobe's like slowly trying to gel back into the rotation and not try to be too. Oh, sorry, not try to be too uh, abrupt and like just 
tear everything up because, like I said, Io has been playing really well. Mm-hmm. So maybe he's kind of factoring that in, and he'll he'll try to probably you'll probably see tonight maybe him trying to get a little bit going a little bit more. Uh, our guy French Bulls TV in the comments saying Kobe will be just fine. Jeff Crook saying Kobe's good. He'll be fine. Um, uh, the man Snigel saying I see an inconsistent one-two guard Kobe White. I think that's kind of the label that Kobe has successfully shed. I think I, I would agree that Kobe had that label before this season. A one-two combo guard who had gotten some opportunities early in his career to be a point guard and it didn't necessarily go super well for him and then and uh, like a combo you know two guard who was an inconsistent shooter through the first few years of his career Salim like we you know we set goals for all of our our Bulls players at the beginning of every season the goal that I set for Kobe this year was be a 40 percent three-point shooter for the first time in your career and it's crazy to think that he hasn't done that yet and he's you know hovering around there and achieving that goal for this season but I, I think he's proven a lot of doubters wrong um, and I wouldn't necessarily label myself a doubter, but I was wondering where Kobe was going to fit into the future of this team with all of the guards and then bringing in Javon this off season. And, uh, he's, I think he's, he's proved a lot of doubters wrong. I am now wondering as far as tonight goes, I would really love to see Kobe pull himself out of this mini two game shooting slump where, you know, and he's coming off, you know, game where he was three of 11 from the field. I also wouldn't mind it if Kobe goes out there, gets some good run in, looks more like himself, and then can keep his minutes low against this joke of Wizards team because we've been monitoring Kobe's minutes all season long. He finally gets a little break because he has a hip injury. And now I'm like, you mentioned Billy leaving his starters in weirdly late in that you know previous blowout win. I feel like Bulls fans would like to see Kobe get out there and look better tonight, but also not have to play 42 minutes tonight. Yeah, I agree on that. Like, it would be ideal for him to, if he if he's in a groove, like, leave him in the 20s if they're up, like, a lot. <laughs> but uh, but I want to get back to kind of like the one-two guard thing. Like, I think people fixate a little too much on positions. I think the biggest thing with Kobe was improving as a decision maker, mm-hmm. especially late in games with the ball, and we've seen that. So, like, it's irrelevant if you want to call him a point guard or two guard. It's about his ha- ball handling and decision making. Like, look at DeMar. He's not he, he's not what you would call a point guard, but he's good with the ball. He can make decisions. He knows how to distribute. You know, he's not a guy who's going to turn the ball over late. That's what's important, really. It's not relevant to me if you want to label him a point guard or, or a two guard or whatever have you. Um, I just that's I just think it's a little too fixated on positions. Yeah, because uh, today's NBA, it's it's all about skill set and and you can have five, four ideal situations having like three, four guys on the court that you can rely on. Right. With late game, um, you know, having the ball in their hands, but obviously you want to kind of kind of you know consolidate the roles. But like like I said, Kobe, he. You can trust him with the ball in his hand, and that's what's important. Yeah, and, you know, to the Bulls' credit, the the game that they lost against Boston um, on on Saturday, like they stayed in that game against the Celtics, and yes, the sh- Celtics were shorthanded, but they stayed in the game because they moved the ball and they got good looks from a lot of different uh, possessions as far as who was initiating the offense and who was initiating sets. We, we've seen Demar even since his, you know, the, the mid stage of his career with the Spurs become more of a, a playmaker and facilitator and bringing up his assist numbers and has continued to do that with the Bulls. And we've also seen Kobe and Io have strides with raising their assist per game numbers this season. And, you know, you mentioned Io having some of those, you know, double digit or near double digit assist games in Kobe's absence. Kobe comes back and they both find ways and find moments in games to create looks for, for not only, uh, you know, themselves, but for their teammates, and I think most most NBA fans would want their team's offensive options to involve what you are talking about, which is sort of more positionless, flowing. Uh, you know, go into this set, go to this set. As a, I mean, Bulls fans also know well that throw the ball into the block to try to you know get Vooch and or Drummond looks in there, or let Demargo ISO. Those are things that have been frustrating and not necessarily right. yielding the best results all the time. Right, yeah. So, like I said, it's whatever is best for the flow of the offense, and it's all about tr- being able to trust whoever you have the responsibility to these guards and whatever. Like even Io, having respond like being trust in him, mm-hmm. like can he handle the ball late? And 
Kobe, can these guys learn from DeMar? Because, I mean, like I said, you know, a lot of people say a lot about DeMar, but he is somebody that shows he's very clutch, Mm -hmm. obviously, uh, and getting to his spots, getting good shots off. But, again, he's good with not turning that ball over. So uh, that's always the key in a lot of late-game stuff, having bad turnovers. We've seen historically for the Bulls, especially uh, through the rebuild process where – they lost so many games because of turnovers. So right, yeah, that's just that's the that's the main thing that the growth that we've seen from Kobe. That maybe I don't know if it's under talked about, but like I feel like that needs to be more uh, spoken about as far as not as far as what he is as far as a starting point guard or two guard. It's just the fact that he's been able to be that guy that you can trust with the ball in his hands. Right. Well, so, I mean, I'm, I'm curious how you feel since the last time we, you know, sat down and actually had a good talk about where this team is and, and what lies ahead for them. Where are you on the spectrum of belief or skepticism when it comes to some Bulls fans in the latter half of this season watching what Kobe's been able to do, watching what I has been able to do since this team lost not only Zach but Patrick Williams and, you know, like other people have needed to step up and take on larger offensive roles, Kobe and Io chief among them. How do you feel about them as potentially being just, you know, whether you call 1-1 one, one and 1-2 one, or vice versa, the starting backcourt of the future of this team, knowing that the Bulls re-signed both of them to multi-year deals this past summer? So this is something, like, the last time Ed and I recorded, this is something we talked about. So we're like, like, do you see them as the future starting backcourt? And I think I see them as the immediate starting backcourt, immediate future starting backcourt. Um, I, I can totally see with the way we've seen the consistency out of Kobe in the long run if we were able to find that, like, the one, like, superstar uh, prospect, if you will. Like, right. Like, in a couple of years, let's say we get lucky enough, we get Cooper Flag. Um, I can see Kobe being, like, a second or third guy on a championship team. Like, a third guy probably right now. We'll see how much better he can get. Um, Io, again, it depends on who the other – two positions are like whoever's at small uh, at, at the three and who's at the center. Mm-hmm. I think it's all very, very, it varies on that. I feel like Iora to me is like a really like a high level world player. That's his ceiling to me. So that type of type of player, I think is dependent on who's around you mm-hmm. more so than just saying, okay, this guy for sure is a long-term star starting player. And uh, that's where I'm at essentially with Io. And, and as far as that backcourt is yeah, concerned. I, I think it's a fair assessment. And, of course, Bulls fans still, we have no idea what's going to happen with Zach Levine or Lonzo Ball this offseason um, as far as whether the Bulls try to get off of either of their contracts and, and move either of them um, or if Lonzo is actually going to try to work his way back and you know play the final year of his contract in a Bulls jersey if he's healthy enough to do so. But I think that the fact that some Bulls fans are already thinking about a future that is more about, as far as the, the backcourt of the team, Kobe and Io, and what how good that could be. And like you said, it also it, you know largely depends on the other complementary pieces of a hypothetical starting five with Kobe and Io as your starting backcourt. It's just like Zach and Lonzo seem so detached from this team and this roster and Kobe and Io have both played in a way that is so optimistic and encouraging to Bulls fans that that's what people have leaned towards thinking about yeah I mean I don't blame people I mean right now the Bulls don't have a lot they just don't outside of those two Uh, unfortunately Pat got injured he was showing some as far as at least being able to be a good role player and his and being that big two-way wing he was trying to show some maturity in that regards but we don't outside of Kobe and uh, Io. We don't. The Bulls don't, just don't have a lot. Um, you can't. You can't depend on Demar. And as far as his age, he's getting older. He's not a long term uh, player on this team. I mean, he's going to be on the team for what? Maybe two two more years. Yeah, if, they'll, if they they'll probably sign him. I think they'll probably sign him to a two or three year deal or something. Yeah. So I totally get it. Um, it's it's you know it, it's hard. Especially when your own front office is not looking at the trees behind the forest, like the forest behind the trees in front of you. Yeah. How are you as a fan supposed to as well? So, you know, so some of us try, you know, (laughs) we try, we try to look at, you know, like, like we've talked ad nauseum about, you know, let's trade Caruso because we can try to build for 
get some future assets while we have these young guards, in right? Like Kobe and Ayo, who are playing really well, and let them continue, right, to grow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame fans for having that mindset of okay, well, this is what we have, so this is what we got to work with, right? Well, and you know, the other, uh, the other shoe on the other foot of that is if you take Demar out of this core of players and you take away your opponent's defensive focus every night being stop DeMar DeRozan, does that lessen the offensive capabilities of Io and or Kobe when they become larger defensive focuses for their opponents every night? And I think that that is a fair counterpoint. No, for sure. And I think DeMar takes a lot of pressure off. And I think you see Kobe too. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's very, very comfortable letting DeMar... For take sure, over in the fourth, he's he's. I don't know if it's it's just it's something he's saying. Okay, I'm just gonna keep learning for the rest of the year, mm-hmm. and then next season, I'm here to go. Right. Um. But yeah, I think those guys definitely take. Demar takes a lot of pressure off those guys, no doubt at all. And yeah. It would be interesting to see what would happen if if Demar missed a few games. What would happen? Like, would they be able to do the same things that they have been doing? Oh, my goodness. We shall see. Um, Let's take a quick break. Shout out some sponsors. We'll come back and dive into tonight's action. Who's in? Who's out for the Bulls and the Wizards? uh, And take a a quick look down memory lane when the Bulls uh, fairly easily handled this Wizards team uh, just a week and change ago. While we're doing that, you know what to do. Be simultaneously productive. Listen to these words from our sponsors, but also hit that like button if you're hanging out with us on YouTube. Hit that like for our guy Kevin on the controls. Please. Hit it for our guy Salim sitting in the Big Dave chair. 62 in, 18 likes. Come on. Hey, Bump come on now. There we go. Uh, pre-game brought to you by our friends at Circus Sportsbook. Always offering those tight money line splits and using their low hold model. Always striving to have their starting odds for any game uh, spreads, point total over unders, player props at minus 110, unlike a lot of other sports bettors and sports books these days who tend to push that starting odd to minus 115 or minus 120 for no good reason at all. Circa also keeps as little money as possible on those large market bets. For example, NBA futures bets. Who's winning the NBA season-long awards? Who's going to go to the NBA Finals? Who's winning it all this year? If you think you know the answer to those questions, the best place to get the best value on those types of bets is Circa, who encourage people to, of course, download and try their Circa Sports Illinois app, but download and try any sports betting app you want. They know that you have options these days as a sports better. They're confident that more often than not, you'll find better experience, better gameplay, better user interface, and they know you will find the best very best customer service compared to others at Circa. Real people behind that Circa sports brand who resolve any issues you might have with their app in a timely fashion, unlike other sports books who use the dreaded chatbots. Salim, are you pro or anti AI and robot intelligence and where it stands right now? I think how like dependent people are getting, and especially some of the things that are being created, I am anti uh, that's the right answer. I mean, when you see that's the right answer, when, have you seen those things where they they create some kind of like uh, AI software that says mm-hmm. we need to kill all humans? Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like, and then they dis they like they take the program down, but it's like at some point that program is like, nope, you're not taking me down, and it's going to just take over. Like we, there's a lot of movies about this. There's Terminator could Terminator. happen for real. Yeah, it, it could, could happen for real if we're not the way careful. we're going. It could, yeah. Uh, but Circa, they're going to do their part to not let it happen because they don't use bots. They use human beings when it comes to their customer service. Download that Circa Sports Illinois app at circusports.com slash Illinois dash app to sign up today. Be on the lookout also for Circa's events, watch parties, and tailgates. Shout out to them. Uh, the Circa up in Waukegan hosted a very fun event for some of our CHO crew last Thursday, the first day of March Madness. If you or someone you know may have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, that's 1-800-426-2537. Text GAMB to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. Salim, I have a question for you, my friend. What time is it? Game time, who? That's right. That's how you do it. Were you ready if I threw it your way, Kev? I was ready, but he did it way better than I I just, I know. I I didn't screw it up this time. Salim is a lifelong (laughs) Bulls ride or die. I got my eyes all over the screen here trying to find the game time click to put on, (laughs) and it would have been bad. I would have been overmodulated. Good work, Salim. You nailed it. Uh With the Game Time app, uh, which is an authorized ticket marketplace of uh, Major League Baseball, it makes getting tickets even faster and easier. 
Baseball season starts on Thursday. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Can't it's, wait. It's come out. Cannot wait. Price yeah, it's almost as crazy. It's almost April. It's gonna be May and I love man. it. I love it. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch for those MLB games with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. If you're looking to go for opening days, the first home series, if you're a Cubs fan, a Sox fan, wherever you are, whichever ballpark you want to go to, you got to check out that game time app. Um, they have, of course, that great feature that lets you see where your seat is, the seat you're looking to buy. They also have great last-minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals. An easy way to find and buy MLB tickets uh, and for every kind of event in your area. Lowest price guaranteed, even cancellation protection, job loss protection, et cetera, et cetera. You can save up to 60% off of buying last minute for sports events, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Uh, get a panoramic view from your seat with the app before you buy the lowest price guarantee, which is if you find a lower price anywhere other than game time, they will credit you 110% of that difference. When you show them, you found a better deal somewhere else in those rare occasions. Also take the guesswork out of buying for a limited time. All users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of 150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms applied. That's code first pitch. Pitch, F-I-R-S-T-P-I-T-C-H, for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed, because I'll leave the dream. What time is it? Game Time, who? That's right, baby. You guys want a quick Game Time story? Sure. Used it to go to the first round of the NCAA tournament on Friday. Got nice. 20 bucks off. My buddies didn't have the code. I'm like, sign up. Dude, that saved us a lot of there money. You go. We went Ooh, for which 50? games did you go to? Uh, Marquette in Western Ooh, Kentucky. Nice. Big Marquette fan here. Big Marquette fan? Yeah. Marquette grad. So they won. There's Who's who's their Sweet 16 matchup? Uh, they're playing North Carolina State. Ooh, so the 11 NC seed, State. the 2 seed. Yeah, man. They're on a run. They, uh, they were in a tight one in the second round. Yeah. Round 32. They, they yeah, pulled last it out. Night, but, last, yeah. Yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Stressful, but uh, man, game time, it really is. It's, it's the most user friendly app. It really is the best. I, I love it. Uh, all righty, so shifting gears and looking to tonight's NBA action, uh, we got some good news for the Bulls. Caruso was listed uh, probable and then downgraded to questionable earlier today with that same ankle sprain he's been dealing with and then was called a game-time decision. Caruso did get the green light, uh, according to Billy Donovan. He will be available to play tonight. He is active. However, they are holding him out of the starting lineup. Uh, so your starters for the Bulls tonight are Kobe and Io. Kobe back in that starting lineup for the second consecutive game after coming back from the hip. Demar, Tory Craig back into the starting lineup in Caruso's place, and Vooch uh, at the center spot. Uh, Demar, uh, Demar, Salim, thoughts on the uh, Caruso available but not starting and Tory back in there? Because I was not a big fan of that handful of games where we had to watch Tory Craig start because I think he looks old and tired and also hurt right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's tough because it's like, do you want to throw AC like full fledged right away? Because he's also he, like that ankle's he's just been pretty, banged up for like yeah. a month. Yeah, he, he plays with like a broken, like his, if his shoulder was dislocated, he's out there half the time. So, like, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough decision for Billy because obviously the, the, with AC in the lineup, the Bulls are just a lot better, but it's, you can't you can't force uh, him t to play a lot of minutes. You just can't. You can't you can't afford it, especially if they're still trying to compete and get into the that play in or keep that play in spot that at least at the ninth spot. Yeah, yeah. You can't afford to lose him for the season. So I understand. Uh, I agree with you as far as uh, Tory Craig. I mean, he has his moments of where he made good plays, but yeah, he's probably at his age. He's probably banged up coming off that injury that he was on. Yeah, yeah, and. It's been tough for him to uh, kind of be consistently the Tory Craig that we know. So uh, you know, we'll see how Billy monitors those minutes for Caruso tonight in a in a reserve role off the bench. And then uh, as far as Dalen Terry, he was also oh, uh, on that injury report with a calf contusion, uh, but I have seen nothing saying he won't be available tonight. So I assume that probable turned into a green light. Uh, and then still no uh, update recently on Julian Phillips, who remains out with that sprained foot. Hope he can come back at some point before the season ends. Um, 
because I thought he was giving the Bulls some good minutes before he got that injury. But he remains out tonight. For the Wizards, wow. Their injury report is just, it. I guess it puts things in perspective if you're a Bulls fan. So Kyle Kuzma, who did play in that Bulls blowout win over the Wizards a week ago, is out with a shoulder injury. Bilal Kolobali, who also did play in that game, is out with a wrist. Tyus Jones remain, remains out with a back injury. Isaiah Livers remains out with a hip injury. Eugene Omarui, who tried to start some shit with Vooch in that game last week. Remember that? Yeah. He is now out <laughs> with a bad ankle. And Denny Avdia, who didn't play in that game last weekend against the Bulls, but had come back and played and played fairly well in the Wizards' last two games, which were both wins, by the way. The Wizards have a two-game streak of Ws coming into this. Denny Avdia, I just saw, is a last-second scratch with a non-COVID illness. Oh, wow. So they got like so they have Jordan Poole, who was on the injury report, but has been given the green light. They got Jordan Poole and a bunch of Yikes. You want to see the Washington Wizards, the Wizards starting lineup tonight? Because it's Poole, Davis, Kispert, Baldwin Jr., and Holmes. Wow. That's your starting five. I mean, this Patrick game should Baldwin be Jr. over after the first quarter. Like. Yes, it should be. <laughs> and yeah, yes, you are right there, Kevin Wells. Patrick Baldwin Jr.? Hell yeah, man. Mm -hmm. oh, he and was so fun in college. I love that. Johnny kid. Davis? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. They got a yeah, starter named Johnny Davis, Wisconsin. Rashawn Holmes, and uh, Corey Kispert, and Baldwin Jr., and Jordan Poole. Wisconsin's yeah. Johnny Davis? Uh, I believe so. Oh, yeah. No, go Bulls, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, we, we hate Wisconsin here. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like, guys like yes, Denny. Yes, Wisconsin's Johnny Davis. A guy like Denny was playing well, too. So, yeah. I mean. In the, so, uh, Avdia, in their uh, win over the Raptors on Saturday, had 22 points, mm -hmm. 13 boards, and five dimes. Yeah. And big, like, big, big game. And he also played well in their win over the Kings last Thursday. Uh, Kuzma led the Wizards in that win with 31 points, but Denny Avdia was giving them some solid minutes in this in these last couple of wins, and now he is a late scratch. I mean, you, wow. This this has to be a Billy rest your guys in the fourth kind of game, right? Has to be. Has to. Ideally, we'll, we'll see if the Bulls take it as seriously, uh, seeing that this other team is really banged up, and hopefully they just come out and, and give Billy enough reason to just say, yeah, you're not playing in the fourth. And hopefully Billy, you know, does it. And he hopefully takes out, like, Kobe and AC and DeMar and gives them, you know, a good good rest for the rest of the game. You would hope so. Uh, I mean, this is a, a game where you're trying to bounce back. The Bulls have dropped their last two, uh, lost to the Rockets, respectably lost to a Celtics team that was shorthanded, but the Bulls still put up a good fight. And uh, look, the Bulls are kind of stuck right now when you look at the Eastern Conference standings, right? I think they're, last I checked, five games back of the Sixers who have slid all the way down to the eighth seed, which is wild. You know, obviously very much missing Joel Embiid. But so Philly has a five-game cushion ahead of the Bulls who are in ninth. The Bulls are only a two and a half game cushion ahead of Atlanta in tenth. Yeah. If you now, those of you who tune into our programming are familiar with the fact that I don't give a fuck about this stupid playing tournament and where the Bulls sit in it. But if you are the Bulls and you want to do well in this playing tournament and win your way out of it and into a legitimate actual first round playoff matchup, because won't it be fun to go get cooked by the the real Celtics? <laughs> You got to be thinking. Let's at least protect home court in that first play-in game, right? No, let's 100%. make sure that we keep this nine seed away from Atlanta. You can't afford to let a very winnable opportunity staring you in the face like this slip by. No, hundred percent. Like so, I mean, you had a win winnable opportunity against the Rockets, and you know, unfortunately, Demar loss is cool, yeah. and that cost him the game essentially. Because I think if Demar plays the rest of that game, they probably win that game. They certainly have a much um, better shot yeah. at it. Um, and because if you know, if, if it's clutch minutes, no, hundred percent, the bulls play those and they win a lot of them a hundred percent. And obviously Boston, it's, they just a better team. I don't care who's missing from their lineup. I um, mean, they're just a lot better than the bulls. Yeah, just so, so, just, so much deeper. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell too much on that loss. It's, right. But yeah, like people are in the comments are saying, you know, sit AC, sit DeMar. It's like, you can't, you, you can, I, even, even against the Wizards, you cannot because you can't lose ground to the Hawks. I mean, they did handle this Wizards team, you know, uh, fairly competently without Kobe 
last sure. weekend. Um, so you would assume, hey, they could probably do that again. Uh, Vooch also had a monster game in that win. I think Vooch put up like 29 and 14 or something like that. Uh, hopefully we can see a bounce back game from Vooch, who was just kind of a meh thought in that Celtics game. Got worked, only grabbed two rebounds. Crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but you are right. I, I would tend to agree. This Bulls team just is not deep enough, especially with all their respective injuries that are just guys who are have been out long term for a while now and they've tried to get used to playing without but they just don't have enough margin of error against anybody no they don't they don't absolutely not the Bull, uh, the bulls right now 13 and a half point favorites wow i mean that's a big spread <laughs> that, that might be the their biggest spread of the season i don't remember them being that big of favorites in any uh, game this year probably not you know if they've been in favor by that many at any point this season it would be against these wizards or in which who this this will be the second of three matchups against them. I don't even think any of the other basement dwellers they've been favored by that many points this season. I but I mean you, you heard that Wizards starting lineup, right? Like this this right. is this is not an NBA team tonight. No. Yeah, that's two rookies, right? Patrick Baldwin and Johnny Davis are both rookies. Yeah. And I didn't even know Patrick Baldwin. No, Patrick Baldwin. Well, so Patrick Baldwin's second, not a rookie. He's been around for a couple of years, but yeah. he's never been like a key rotation guy he was he was like wasting away on not wasting away but he was just on the like warriors bench for a while right like, yeah like the war i think warriors drafted him like in the second round or maybe undrafted i can't remember but yeah no he, he's not a rookie for okay. sure uh yeah no he, he's got a couple years of experience he yeah. played college ball at milwaukee he's just a long-term development uh project. yeah um but yeah like look if the bulls are capable of building up a 20 plus point lead as they head to the fourth that should be an opportunity to keep Kobe's minutes low keep DeMar's minutes low but again we saw the Bulls had a pretty sizable lead a week ago and Billy still felt the right. need to keep some of his key guys in there um, including like Caruso was in that game late and got banged up on a play where he was like diving for a loose ball on the floor and got all hobbled and then that was that you know what ended up being an ankle injury i feel like not where they are on the schedule it's the home stretch you're trying to keep, get yourself as healthy as possible keep yourself as healthy as possible for two winner go home pre-playing playoff games or you know pre-playoff playing games i mean yeah i feel like you have to seize an opportunity tonight to try and just put this team away do not let the the, the fake wizards the wizards hang around and let this turn into a dicey, scary game. No, for sure. I I, I agree. I hundred percent agree, and I've agreed with you before. You, you have to, if they're up that big, you have to try to get Demar and AC out. But one thing I'll say too, like at the at the same time, just to not not to necessarily be a devil's advocate, but I I kind of could understand why Billy's hesitant because realistically, even with let's say even with like Julie, uh, Julian Phillips healthy, obviously as if he had Dalen available. Like, those guys, while they show good stuff, they're not really reliable NBA players. Like, they're not guys that you can come in to expect to make, help you win games. Nope. Um, so you're he's playing with, like, five, six guys on a nightly basis that, yes, these guys will help me win this game. Um, so I kind of can understand in that respect where he's hesitant to take DeMar out because then, okay, will Dalen be able to give me good minutes? Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. You know, so I, in that regards, I can, not, like I said, not to play completely devil's advocate, but I can kind of understand why Billy would be hesitant to, even against the Wizards, uh, to, and you're up 20 plus, be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, we are five minutes past seven central. That means tip off is just a few minutes away. We will wrap up and get out of here. Thank you everybody for tuning in to CSGO Bulls pregame. Hit the like button on your way out. If you haven't done it yet, do it for our guy, Kevin on the control sitting in for Joey tonight. Do it for our guys, Salim co-host of the Bulls gold pod. Check them out too. If you aren't already, you can find them on all your major podcast platforms, him and his guy Ed Schuler. Uh, Salim underscore BG hoops is where you can find him on the Twitter machine. Also, speaking of, make sure you follow our guy, Will to go Golly, Will underscore Golly, for his in-game updates. He is at the UC reporting tonight on tonight's action. He will join us in post-game. Uh, until then, let's uh, watch some hoops and hopefully watch a Bulls laugher, right? Let's get some rest for Kobe and DeMar 
after Kobe gets some some uh, some three point shooters uh, three pointers to fall, and we'll have ourselves a nice calm easy victory. How about that? Hopefully, maybe, maybe they'll be up by like forty by the fourth, and like would love it. Even if even we if could, you don't feel comfortable with that, uh, like with Dale and end, it's forty. So it's like, hey. I mean, if they're up 40 <laughs> going to the fourth, we're starting post game at the start of the fourth quarter. How about that? <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> Either way, we'll talk to y'all right here back on our CSGO set live from the West Loop Studios. Let's watch some basketball. Thanks for tuning in. We all silly like the mayor. 